Hi guys. So a few days ago, I asked on my Instagram story for a few vlog suggestions because obviously I have never done this before and uh, it wouldn't hurt to take a few suggestions. So there were a lot of suggestions and a lot of requests regarding the accommodation, um, you know, a tour of my accommodation, a room tour, uh, questions about the living situation in Manchester. And also there was this one um, suggestion which went something like, give us a room tour so we get to know you better. And I thought about it and I was like, okay, that's that's not so complicated to start with and it's, it's quite fun. Um, I personally believe that my room and the place that I live at is an extension to myself. It really reflects how I feel and how I'm doing at that point. So yeah, I was like, why not? <laughs> so I'm not gonna keep you waiting, uh, let's begin. So this is my living room and it's quite cozy, it's quite well lit, which I absolutely love. And as you can see, there are some balloons from my birthday still lying around. I just don't wanna get rid of them. And there's a TV, which I have never used because I just don't watch TV. And there's also a bulletin board which has um, my sketches and things like that. Um, no one else uses it because I live alone here now. Um, so yeah, it's my cute little art space. So in this video, you're going to realize that I am actually quite obsessed with flowers. I just think flowers and plants just bring life to any room that they're in. Especially if you live in a place like Manchester, which is really not known for its weather. Uh, it can get quite gloomy and quite dull, so having a few plants and few flowers around just, I don't know, it just lights up my day. As you can see, I have some flowers here and also right next to it I have a diffuser and these are a few rough sketches. I'm just um, trying to learn how to work with pastels right now. So yeah, that's my whole living room situation. As you can see, the kitchen is right behind me and the good thing about IQ residences is that the kitchen and the living room are connected. So if you have your friends over, if you have someone just visiting you, you can always have them sit and talk to you while you're cooking. So you don't have to miss out on anything. So this is my kitchen. Right now it's just my stuff because all my flatmates have left, they've gone back home. So everything you see here is just mine. More flowers. <laughs> I just recycle old beer bottles because they, I mean, they serve the purpose, so it's a good thing. And I don't know if you can tell, but I am super obsessed with tea. There's just so many, many packs of it. And if I don't finish all of this by the time I go back home, I'm taking it with me. There's no doubts about that. So recently I was talking to someone about coffee and we were just joking about it. And I kind of did the math as to how much I was spending every day and every month on coffee and the figures just blew my mind. So I had this moment of realization where I was like, buying coffee every day is just not working in my favor. Um, so I have to start making coffee again and that's a good thing because finally I get to use my reusable cups again. Uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of cafes stopped accepting reusable cups and I mean that's understandable. Now I can finally use them again. I will show you. So this is Blister and this is Tinker. Uh, they're named after my some of my favorite characters from my childhood books. Um, Stinker is actually supposed to be a beagle in Dear Dumb Diary and Blister is this girl who came of age and all that. So yeah, some, some good memories, some good childhood memories and the colors just went so well. So I had to name them that. And this is a new cup that I got recently. Um, it says be happy. It's so cute. And I love the colors because it just makes me so happy and just wakes me up in the morning. So that's everything in the kitchen and the living room. I made myself some tea. So let's go to mine. So this is my cozy little room. Um, that's everything. <laughs> um, let us begin. <laughs> Okay, so this is what you see when you enter my room. Walking in. This is my nice cute little study space. And this is my bed. Right now I am working on my dissertation. And this is the last draft of my pilot study. Can't wait to actually start conducting the study. On the wall I have a few quotes and a lot of post-it notes, some of my relevant topics and this note saying no more sugar 
which was such a fail because I never followed that and obviously some more flowers and here are some of my books which I use most often so let me show you so these are the books I use quite frequently right now and the first one is my planner I bought this planner in the beginning of this year and I thought I'd have a lot to write and a lot to do but obviously we know how that worked out um, but I still use it for my daily activities and you know things related to my studies and stuff like that I am someone who loves planning so for me this is a very good thing to have and this is my journal um, this is the one I'm using right now I take journaling very seriously and I've journaled for over a decade now and it's helped me through a lot of things in my life and I'm actually going to make a separate video on journaling so I'm just giving you a gist here inside there are a lot of things very personal to me and this book is just a collection of all my thoughts and all my memories and just things that help me introspect and reflect on my own life so finally we have this uh, this was given to me by someone very special to me and I've always wanted to use this for something very fruitful so yeah I have finally decided to use this for the thing that's most important to me right now and that's my career so I have decided to use this book for my job search and for my tea with Abhi and marketing casebook and just use it for something really important to me. Oh, also, I want to show you something that's kind of cool. Um, I will just click it and I'm going to keep my phone. Do you see? It's charging. <laughs> so in my study space, I always have loads of water and a small box with some dry fruits in it. I love munching on dry fruits when I when I work or when I study or whatever. Oh, and the small cloth coaster. I actually found this uh, outside my room. This is not mine. It was just lying there and I left it there for a day and no one claimed it. So I was like, okay, whatever. Finders keepers. So before, all my books were in these shelves. Uh, but I moved a few things around because I wanted a better background for my videos. So now all of these are my products and things like that. Oh, the small JD bottle. There's actually a story to it. I kept this JD bottle because um, I have a very nice memory attached to it and I am such a memory holder. It was in the first month of college. Um, I'd gone to Ashburn and my first friend here, Adi, he and I were just sitting on the lawns of Ashburn. It was like 11 in the night or something and we were just having... Uh, JD and we were talking about supernatural stuff and stars and things like that. It was such a pleasant memory and also one of the first nice things I did here in Manchester. So I kept the bottle. And this here is something I got myself from Tate London. Uh, it's made by the Yellow Owl Workshop. So if you like cute accessories like these then you should probably check it out and these are a bunch of polaroids that i shot recently with my friends and i made one for tea with abby it's me with a cup of tea and a book which is just me all the time so this is the view from my room um it's the beautiful whitworth park and it's very nice because i actually get to see the seasons change and in autumn it was completely orange it was so beautiful but it's a little depressing in the winter seasons because there are no leaves at all. So these are my baby plants. I will be taking these back with me when I go back to Bangalore. And I asked my friends to actually name these plants and they are named this Corona because this was my company during quarantine. And because this was named Corona, my, my boyfriend named this virus. Yeah, it's, it's, it's depressing, but at least these are cute. <laughs> this is the bulletin board that's inside my room. Um, it's a collection of all things personal to me and all things that I like and just like seeing on a daily basis. If you know anything at all about Harry Potter, then you know what this is. And I think you'll realize that I am a major Potterhead. This was something we won uh, in the first month of college when we had a trip to Bray Day. And we made a poster, which is right here. And no one wanted it, so I got it. The rest of it is just postcards and posters from some of the artists that I really adore. Um, this one is from William Blake and this one is from Lucian Freud. I love all of his work. And this is a photo booth picture from a brunch that we went to um, in the beginning of this year. Um, we looked so happy because we had no idea what was waiting for us. 
And I love collecting postcards. Uh, these were given to me, and this was given to me by the University of Manchester for one of the heritage tours um, in the beginning of this year. Um, if you are going to come to Manchester, then you should probably go on the heritage tour because it's really worth it. And also a small Triwizard Cup. It's cute. Oh, and I found this in Whitworth Museum. Um, this is everything that you can find in Whitworth Park. And if you do find something, then you can just check it off. So as you can see, I have found a few things, but yeah, it's kind of cute. So I just put it up on my notice board. And finally, this blue ribbon is from um, the flowers that my boyfriend sent me once. And it says your flowers are sleeping. So also here we have a small bag from Book Fairies International. So I came across Book Fairies a few months ago. Um, if you follow Emma Watson, you probably have come across this initiative by her, uh, where she gives away free books and leaves it in public places for people to find it. So that's essentially what Book Fairies do. So what you can do is you can go to their website and purchase stickers and uh, ribbons and all of that. And you can put that in a book, which may be used, may be new, doesn't matter and you can leave them around the city so other people can find it. So it's a way of encouraging other people to also develop a habit of reading. And I really like the idea because um, it feels good to find something and especially something like a book. Talking of books, we are finally in my favorite part of the room. Um, this is the part that makes me most happy in this entire room. So my bookshelf is actually right next to my bed. It's at my bed frame and that makes it quite convenient and it also serves as a really nice background for my book review videos as you can see there's some more tea here you can never have enough tea um, these are some of my academic writing books and this is a photo frame which i take with me everywhere i go um, it's a picture of me from my childhood and i've had this with me in manipal in germany uh, in my ncc camps in bangalore and now in Manchester. So I take this with me everywhere. It just it just makes me really happy. I have a collection of non-fiction, fiction and uh, marketing related books. So these are some more of my books. And most of the books that you can see here are my other journals and I just finished writing in this. So yeah, I got a new one. Um, there are also books on consumer behavior and consumer society. Uh, these are books from my library, which I haven't been able to return yet because of the pandemic. And on this side, there are a lot of books regarding marketing and advertising. Uh, so there's one of my favorites, The End of Advertising. Then there's Can't Buy My Love. Um, it's a very interesting book on consumer behavior, actually, because it talks about how advertisements change the way we think and feel. All of these are my marketing textbooks and the one uh, with the stickers and annotations they're the ones that I own and the rest of them are actually from the from the library. I'm actually hoping I get to take them with me, you know, that would be fun. And this here uh, was something I bought from Tate London. It was quite an impulsive purchase actually, but I have no regrets. I absolutely love them. On the inside you have cards like these uh, with loads and loads of artists and each card has something about life, work and inspiration. So. I have no regrets about this investment. I absolutely love this. Also, I have a journal, another journal, but this is a one line a day kind of journal. And you have a question for every day and you answer that question over the span of five years. So it's amazing because you get to see how your answers change or how your perspective changes. And it's one of the best investments I've ever made, to be honest. So if you're new to journaling or if you're just beginning to explore the um, the habit of journaling, then I would highly recommend you buy this book because it, it really helps you see how you're changing as a person. And finally, my dear Dobby, just sitting in the side. Uh, I thought he was going to be a soft toy, but honestly, he's he's just so, he's like a rock. So, but he's so cute. And on this side of the room, uh, which is towards the door, I usually have things that I need when I'm leaving or when I'm entering. So that's my, that's my bag, my coats and my shoes. So it's all towards the door. 
and on the other side I have my bathroom thank god I have a personal bathroom I hate sharing bathrooms with people and that's my that's my wardrobe so this is the size of the wardrobe that you get in IQ um, so yeah that's that's the whole of it some of my friends have bigger wardrobes um, even though they have smaller rooms so but I think this is quite enough if you if you know how to arrange things and if you know how to manage things then this space is more than enough to keep most of your things so initially I had a lot of plans for my summer wardrobe because I was so eagerly waiting the warmer months here in Manchester uh, but then all of them were spent in my room in pajamas and I mean that was that was the rest of the world too so I can't really complain but that was a lot of outfits gone for a waste so yeah that's my room and that's all of my things my study area my bulletin board uh, my brede poster and just everything that was my living room my kitchen and my own room um, if it helped anyone then I'm happy <laughs> I would also like to show you guys some spots within my accommodation uh, which are outside of my flat, but I do use them quite often. But before that, I actually do want to address a few questions that I have received over the past few months, uh, mostly on Instagram, and these are questions regarding accommodation and Manchester itself, so I will be answering a few of them today. So I just made some quick coffee uh, right before we get into the whole discussion about accommodations because I was just feeling too sleepy. So I actually uh, went through the questions that I got on Instagram. So it's mostly like what's the best accommodation, uh, what does it cost, what's the cost of living. Let me start off with telling you about my accommodation. I live in IQ Wimslow Park and it's a part of the IQ student accommodation group. They basically provide student residences uh, in and around the UK. There's almost one in every city. So if you're a student that's looking to come to the UK and stay in a private accommodation, not university accommodation, then IQ is one of the good private accommodations that you will find in almost every city in the UK. So in Manchester there are many IQ residences. I stay in the one opposite to Whitworth Park, so that's IQ Wimslow Park. It's not one of the cheapest accommodations, but it's not one of the most expensive accommodations either. So the reason that I chose this accommodation over the others uh, was mainly because of the proximity to the university. So from my accommodation to the business school, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes and it's quite nice because it's a very pleasant walk in the morning and it just wakes me up, you know. I don't like taking public transport quite often. I only do it if I really need to take the bus, otherwise I just walk. Um, so for me, it was quite easy to get to university and come back. The other reason was that right under my accommodation, there's Lidl, there's Tesco, there's uh, Superdrug, there are a uh, few places to eat like Subway and Cafe Nero and all that. So it was quite, you know, convenient to have department stores and cafes right downstairs. And the other reason was that this accommodation was right opposite to Whitworth Park. And for me, I, I just love taking walks. I just love going out and just spending some time in, in, you know, surrounded by nature. So I really like that aspect of it. And so this accommodation was perfect for me. Is IQ the best place for having a social life? I don't know. Some people I know from IQ actually had a brilliant time here. They made a lot of friends, they made you know their own community within and they hung out with each other all the time. Personally though, I'm not a very social person. Uh, I'm kind of an introvert so for me, uh, I don't really have friends within the accommodation. Most of my friends live in other accommodations. So if I only had to talk about myself, um, I didn't really enjoy the social aspect of IQ accommodations. Uh, but that's on me because I know a lot of my friends did have a very good social life within the within the IQ uh, accommodation itself. So IQ is actually a private accommodation but there are many other university accommodations too. Um, some of the good ones that I've heard of are George Kenyon Hall and Denmark Road and Ashburn. 
So I've never been to George Kenyon Hall, but I've been to Denmark Road multiple times and it's right across my street. So the proximity to the university is quite close and and even the living situation is quite similar to IQ even though it's a university accommodation. I don't know how the university tenancy agreement works with master students, but with the private accommodation such as IQ, uh, you can book it for your entire term from September to September. So Denmark Road is a pretty good university accommodation. Uh, the other one that I've been to multiple times is Ashburn Hall in Fallowfield. I mean, I haven't stayed there, but personally, I feel like Ashburn's not the best place to stay at because if you're quite particular about having your own uh, bathroom or having a big place to cook and all of that, then you might not really enjoy it. But Ashburn's the best place to have the university experience because I have felt so much more at home in Ashburn with my friends, uh, just hanging out and, you know, just having a good time with them than in IQ because in IQ it's kind of isolated except if you have friends over but in Ashburn you always see people walking around because you have common corridors, you have common kitchens and Ashburn is also a catered hall so you will meet people during lunch and dinner and whatnot. If you're someone very social then Ashburn is probably the best place to stay at but what I would consider the biggest drawback of Ashburn would be the distance from the university it takes almost half an hour to even get to the central part of the university, which is uh, the main building of the university. So if you, if you study engineering or if you study the sciences, then you have to walk much further down the road and you have to walk to the north campus, which is quite far and Ashburn is really far from university, so you might have to take the bus every day. Now in the university and towards the city center, there are other accommodations. Uh, some of them are fairly priced, some of them are quite expensive. Uh, I think there's one called Vita student accommodation or something which is very expensive. I've also received some messages about budgeting and honestly I would say that's entirely up to you because none of us lead similar lifestyles. I know there are people who spend much more than I do and I know there are people who spend much much less than I do. So it really depends on how you can balance it out. But I think you would probably need around um, 600 to 700 pounds a month. Again, that depends entirely on you and the place you pick to stay at and all of that and how far you are from the university, where your expenses are going. But I would say that's probably around what you would need to live a normal, um, unconstrained life here in Manchester, around 700 pounds the best place to go grocery shopping personally i would prefer tesco because i love their vegetables and all of that but little and aldi have some really great offers but if you have some big shopping to do then little would be the best place to go to now if you're an indian or a south asian student coming to study here in manchester then the supermarket called worldwide which is right next to whitworth park um, is the best place to go shopping you get all the vegetables, all the food, all the spices and everything that you need uh, which we use back home and the price points are really good so it's quite a bargain actually that's like the holiest place here uh, for all of the South Asian students <laughs> okay so that's the whole discussion about the accommodation uh, let's go and check out the other places in IQ So right now we are entering the hub. This is one of the common areas of IQ and let's go in. So right now we are at the hub and this is one of the common areas of IQ Wimslow Park and it's such a nice, such a nice place. Usually this is a very filled up place but because of Covid 
everyone has gone home and that's why it's this empty right now but if there are any parties or if there's anything going on at all then it's going to be in one of these areas and it's quite nice actually to see this place bustling and all of that but right now it's weirdly empty but I still come here quite often because now that it's this empty, it's a great place to work on my dissertation. So sometimes when I'm bored in my room, I just come here and I study because if you know you you just get really bored of just staying in one place all the time. So yeah, this is a great place to just come and chill or even study or just hang out with your friends. So that's pretty much it. If you are a prospective student coming here to Manchester, then I hope this video kind of helped you understand the accommodations better and just gave you a gist about what it's like to be here in Manchester. If you have any more doubts or questions about the accommodation, then please feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram. That's kind of where I am most active, so I'd be happy to help. And if you're not a student and you still sat through all of this, then thank you. <laughs> I hope this gave you a small peek into my everyday life and also uh, helped you get to know me better. So if you like this video, then please leave a like, wherever that is. <laughs> and also subscribe to my channel because this is going to be more of a regular thing from now on. And also, uh, I will be posting a few book reviews soon. So I'm kind of excited. So yeah, I hope you'll stick around and also enjoy and learn with me. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. <laughs> Bye!